All right, guys. Well, I have a new book for you. It is called The Wind in the Willows. This is the Scholastic Junior Classic. It's retold from the real story from Kenneth Graham. And I googled Kenneth Graham. I didn't know how to pronounce his name at first. So Kenneth Graham wrote this book, The Wild, um, To the Wild Wood, 12 Miles, Toad Hall, 2 Miles. It's a story about these animals and their adventures. Um, if you have ever been to Disneyland and you've been on the um, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, it comes from this book. There is an AR test that goes along with it as well when we get to the end. The AR test is going to be by Ellen Miles. So many people have retold this story, but this is the scholastic version of it. Um, it's retold from Kenneth Graham by Ellen Miles. She's the one who wrote this version of it just shortened it actually or just kind of took pieces from it the illustrations were by Stephen Smallman I just like this class it kind of chops cuts down stories that are classic that are good stories All right, I hope you like it The Riverbank Chapter 1 Mole had been working very hard all morning spring cleaning his little underground home he was tired and his back hurt and now something was calling him from up above. Spring was moving in the air, and suddenly Mole could not stand to be inside for one more minute. He threw down his broom. It was time to get outside. He scraped and scratched and scrabbled and scrooged, digging busily with his little paws and muttering to himself, Up we go, up we go, until at last, pop! He came out into the sunlight, and he was rolling in the warm grass of a big meadow. This is wonderful, he said. This is better than cleaning. Mole felt sunshine and soft breezes. He heard the birds singing. He jumped up and ran joyfully all the way across the meadow to the hedge that ran along the far side. Spring was bursting out everywhere. Everyone else in the meadow was very busy, but Mole thought that made it even more fun to be free. Then he came to the edge of the river. A river. Mole had never seen a river before. It glinted and gleamed and sparkled as it ran full of bubbles and swirls in motion. Right away, Mole loved it. He trotted alongside of the river until he was tired. As he rested on the grassy shore, he noticed a dark hole in the opposite bank. He thought dreamily about what a nice snug home it would make. Then he saw a face. A little brown face with whiskers, small, neat ears, and thick, silky hair. It was the water rat. Hello, Mole, said Rat. Would you like to come over? Oh, yes, but how? asked Mole. Rat bent over and unfastened a rope. Then he stepped into the little blue and white boat. It was just the perfect size for two animals. Rat rowed across the river and helped Mole into the boat. What a wonderful day, said Mole, as Rat started rowing again. Do you know I've never been in a boat before in my whole life? Rat was shocked. It's nice, said Mole, as he leaned back in his seat and felt the boat sway slightly under him. Nice? It's the only thing, said Rat, as he rowed. Believe me, my young friend, there is nothing better than simply messing about in boats. Simply messing, he went on dreamily. Messing about in boats. Messing. Look out! Rat! cried Mole suddenly. It was too late. The boat ran right into the bank. Dreamy Rat lay on his back in the bottom of the boat, his heels in the air. About in boats, Rat went on, picking himself up with a laugh. I'll show you. Why don't we spend the day on the river? Mole waggled his toes and gave a happy sigh. What a day I'm having, he said. Let's start right away. Hold on a minute, said Rat. He tied up the boat, climbed into his hole, and came back out, carrying a big picnic basket. What's inside, asked Mole, wriggling with curiosity. There's cold chicken, replied Rat. Cold ham, cold beef, pickles, rolls, creams, sorry, rolls, cheeses, and 
wishless mundan <laughs> wishes wishes I'm right here wishes lemon wish oh I got it now I'm gonna start over cold ham cold beef pickles rolls cheese sandwiches lemonade soda oh stop stop cried mole this is too much do you really think so? asked Rat. The other animals are always telling me I don't bring enough. He set the picnic basket in the corner of the boat and began to row again. Mole was so happy. He leaned back and let his paw trail in the sparkling, rippling water. Rat just rowed on, letting him dream. So you really live on the river? Mole asked finally. What a wonderful life. By it, and with it, and on it, and in it, said Rat. It's brother and sister to me, and company, and food, and drink, and washing. It's my world, and I don't want any other. Winter, or summer, spring, or autumn, it's always fun and exciting. But isn't it lonely sometimes, Mole asked. Just you in the river, and no one else to talk to? No one else to, Rat smiled. You're new, you don't know. The riverbank is so crowded nowadays. Otters, kingfishers, ducks, everybody busy and happy. What's over there? asked Mole, waving a paw toward a dark forest on one side of the river. That's the wild wood, said Rat. We don't go there very much, we river bankers. What are the animals like there? asked Mole, a little nervously. Well, replied Rat, let me see. The squirrels are all right, and the rabbits, some of them anyway, and then there's Badger, of course. He lives right in the heart of it. Nobody bothers him. They'd better not. Who would bother him? Asked Mole. Well, there are weasels and foxes and so on, said Rat. I'm friends with some of them, but you can't really trust them, and that's a fact. And what's past the wild wood? Mole asked. Past the wild wood is the wide world, said Rat. I've never been there, and I'm never going. You shouldn't either. Now then, here's our lunch place. Rat turned the boat into a quiet pool with green grassy banks. It was so beautiful that Mole could only gasp. Oh my! Rat tied up the boat, helped Mole step out, Sorry, guys. I'm going to just keep going. Uh, I, I know I stopped right in here. Um, Rat tied up the boat, helped Mole step out, and lifted the picnic basket onto the shore. Mole wanted to unpack it all by himself, and Rat was happy to let him. He lay on the grass and rested while his excited friends spread out the tablecloth and took everything out of the basket. Oh my, Mole said, when he saw all the food. When their picnic was ready, Rat said, Help yourself, old fellow. Mole was glad, too. He was very hungry. What are you looking at? asked Rat, after they'd been eating for a while. I am looking, said Mole, at a streak of bubbles moving along the water. Bubbles? Aha! said Rat. He made a little noise. A wide, shiny nose showed itself. above the edge of the bank. The otter hauled himself out of the river and shook the water from his coat. Rat introduced Mole to Otter. Nice to meet you, said Otter. Such a day, he went on. Everyone is out on the river today. I came up here to try and get a moment's peace. There was a rustle from the hedge behind them, and a stripy head peeked out. Come on, old badger, shouted Rat. Badger trotted forward to step a step or two, then grunted. Hmph! Company! He turned his back and disappeared. We won't see any more of him today, said Rat. Well, tell us, Otter, who's out on the river? Toad's out, replied the Otter, in his brand new boat. New clothes, new everything. The two animals looked at each other and laughed. Once it was nothing but sailing, said Rat. Then he got bored with that. Last year it was houseboating, now it's rowing. Just then, Toad rowed by, splashing as he worked his oars. Rat called and waved, 
but Toad was concentrating too hard on his rowing to answer back. The three animals talked for a little longer. Then Otter dove back into the river and disappeared, leaving a streak of bubbles on the water. Soon it was time to go. The afternoon sun was getting low as Rat rowed gently homeward. Mole was getting restless. Ratty, please, I want to row now, he said suddenly. Rat shook his head with a smile. Wait until you've had a few lessons. It's not, it's not as easy as it looks. Mole was quiet for a minute or two, but he began to feel more and more jealous of Rat rowing so easily along. He knew he could do it just as well. He jumped up and grabbed the oars, knocking Rat out of the way. Mole tried to row, but completely missed the water. His legs flew over his head, and he found himself lying on top of Rat in the bottom of the boat. He grabbed at the side of the boat, and the next moment, sploosh, over went the boat. Oh my, how cold the water was, and oh how very wet it felt as Mole sank and rose and sank again. Then a paw grabbed him by the back of his neck. It was Rat, and he was laughing. Rat helped Mole to shore, hauled him out, and set him on the bank to dry out. Then Rat dove into the water again to save the boat and the picnic basket. Finally, they got back into the boat. Ratty, said Mole, I am so sorry. Will you forgive me? He felt so embarrassed and ashamed of himself. Of course, said Rat. Listen, why don't you come and stay with me for a while? My house isn't fancy like Toad's, but it's very comfortable. I'll teach you to row and swim. Mole couldn't believe his ears or his luck. He was so happy he couldn't even speak. But Rat understood. When they got home, Rat lit a fire. Then he told Mole, Mole river stories till supper time. Mole listened with all his might. After supper, Rat took a very sleepy Mole upstairs to the be best bedroom. Mole fell asleep to the sound of the river, lapping near his window, and the wind in the willows above. So willow is a tree. That's a And this is what willow trees look like. So they're in the wind and the willow tree. That's the name of the book too, The Wind and the Willows. All right, and that is chapter one. I didn't even, I don't think I read you the title of the chapter one. Oops, it's called The River Bank. Probably did, but I just don't remember. So we read chapter one, The River Bank. All right, and this is the first chapter. And I know there's a curious mind out there wondering how many chapters are in this book. So it goes to chapter 11. So there's 11 chapters. 